with Alexander Lacazette's Arsenal contract expiring this summer, has he today confirmed his desire to leave the club in the upcoming transfer window? If so, what players have Arsenal lined up as potential replacements? And are Man United set to be without new manager Ralph Raniak in their massive game versus Arsenal? As per, let's find out in the latest Arsenal news today. Yo, what is going on guys? My name is Babs14 and welcome back to your boys channel. As per, make sure to go down there and smash a like on the video and also while you guys are down there, please do consider subscribing to your boys channel as well because we are on the road to 70,000 subscribers. But let's get into the after news and let's start off with Alexandra Lacazette. The future of Alex Lacazette on this channel has become a regular occurrence over the past weeks. As you guys are aware, his contract is expiring at the end of the season. In terms of the Arsenal manager Mikel Arteta, he has confirmed Firm that Arsenal will look to address the situation as soon as the next window. But what about the man himself and what today has Alex Lacazette said? He has confirmed that my agents are starting to look right and to the left. There are still many questions. I prefer to wait until January to position myself. The fact alone that he's confirmed there and there that his agents are looking around at options for potential transfers, it further confirms the chance of a potential transfer as soon as the next transfer window. Now in terms of myself and many other Arsenal fans, we have kind of already ruled out the possibility because in terms of our other striker about Aubameyang, of course, he is going to AFCON. So with Arsenal already losing Aubameyang, the prospect of then losing Lacazette as well would be a massive blow to this current Arsenal team. But if this was to be the case, make no mistake, my friends, Arsenal will look to sign a brand new centre forward. And as confirmed by Mr. Fabrizio Romano himself, when asked on Arsenal News, he says they'll be looking for a striker in 2022. So Arsenal do want a brand new striker, but who exactly is this player that Arsenal want to sign? Let's start over in Fiorentina and let's start off with Dusan Vlahovic. What Fabrizio Romano said last week on the Arsenal Lounge, Arsenal have contacted Fiorentina to ask them how much do you want to sell Vlaovic in the January transfer window. Fiorentina said they want 70 million euros. Now first things first, it is a hefty price tag, but secondly in terms of Arsenal, the fact that they've asked in the first place about a January transfer, it further confirms that Arsenal are indeed looking to sign a brand new striker in the next transfer window, as Fabrizio has already confirmed the agents of the player are simply not answering Arsenal's calls. So don't get it twisted, if by gargantuan institution comes knocking on your door and you don't want to answer, then Big Ban forget about any potential transfer. This video has been kindly sponsored by the guys at OneFootball. OneFootball is the app when it comes to staying up to date with the beautiful game. Now whether that be staying up to date with the latest transfer news, maybe staying up to date with the team's latest fixtures, or even things like lineups, goal alerts and live match updates. To put it simple, if you are a fan of football, you need OneFootball. Well that sounds amazing Babs, but how much does this app cost? Well this is the beauty of OneFootball, you can access all their great features for the price of absolutely nothing. Yes, the app is available for free and so make sure to hit the first link down below in the description and download the one football app not only do you guys get access to a great app but you're also helping your boys channel out massively so for that a gargantuan thank you from me to you so if it's not to be vlahovic what about swedish international alexandra isak well fabrizio romano has confirmed that isak is a player that arthur appreciate in fact they contacted his representatives in the summer but the player is holding up for a team with champions league football and isak here is a player that arthur for me certainly can afford in terms of wages and trust Fees. But at the same time, he is intent on Champions League football, and unfortunately, as of right now, Arthur simply don't have the facilities to offer that. And also, in terms of price, like it is going to be hefty. We're talking probably 70 to 80 million euros. Unfortunately, that makes Isak like an unlikely transfer as soon as the next transfer window. But in terms of this brand new striker, what type of striker do Arthur actually want to sign? Well, once again, referencing Mr. Here we go, Fabrizio Romano. Arthur are looking for a technical striker, something different and modern. They are looking at many strikers. So essentially, Arthur wants a high technical striker, a player that is able to drop deep and link up the play, and overall be a reference point for the Arthur attack. And so in terms of other names that might just stick out, in terms of myself, I want to keep an eye on a certain dominant Calvin Lewin. Now, of course, if Arthur wanted to sign him as soon as the next transfer window, yes, it's going to be very expensive. But at the same time, Arthur have here in the past with Ramsdale and Ben White, they are not scared to go into the English Premier League market, and in Ben White specifically, spend high on English Premier League talent. In terms of Calvin Lewin, not only is he Premier League proven, but also 23 or 24 years of age entering his peak years and ultimately suits the profile that Arsenal are targeting. If anything, he is my striker to watch, my friends, as per let me know your own thoughts down below in the comments. If it came down to you, my scouts, what centre forward do you guys realistically want to see Arsenal sign in the next transfer window? But talking about strikers, could Arsenal potentially look to source from within? And I am talking about a certain following Balogun, who after scoring a hat-trick against Derby County, now has scored 15 goals in 11 games 
games and two assists for the Arsenal under 23s, directly involved in a goal every 55 minutes. Balogun is 21 years of age now and he's now getting to the age where he needs to play more first team football and if that isn't the case at Arsenal it might just have to be elsewhere on a loan transfer. But in terms of Arsenal just have a look at our current star boys Bukayo Saka and Emil smith -Rowe. Both were players that were given opportunity at Arsenal when there was either lack of availability or players not performing in their positions. Could Balogun be the latest Arsenal youngster to get a chance in the Arsenal first team? So let me know your own thoughts down below on Ferrer and Balogun and do you guys think he should be given a chance in the Arsenal first team? But talking about strikers, what about Thursday and Man United? And with the Batman out of form, could Arsenal start a certain Gabriel Martinelli? Will Mikel Arteta speak on Martinelli after the game against Newcastle? Says Gabby is a joy to work with. The way he trains whether he's playing or not, he totally deserves a chance and he is a goal for it. High praise from the Arsenal manager towards a Brazilian star boy. But in terms of him starting over Aubameyang on Thursday as an out and out centre forward, in terms of pacing behind and goal for it, yes, he would offer Arsenal that. But in terms of dropping deep and linking up the play, I just don't think he's ready. And also, secondly, in terms of experience, Arsenal already have the youngest team, youngest starting eleven in the Premier League. So to take out the Arsenal captain and Arsenal's most experienced player, and to then bring in a 20-year-old in a must-win game at Old Trafford, as exciting as it does sound on paper, us Arsenal fans here put down the controller and stop playing so much career mode. But what do you guys make of it? Do you guys agree or disagree with your boy? And if it came down to you right now watching this video, would you start either Gabriel Martinelli or Pierre Aubameyang as Arsenal striker on Thursday against Manchester United? Okay, then moving on to Man United versus Arsenal. It is a must-win game at OT Old Trafford. Of course, last year, Arsenal won their 1-0. But in terms of Man United, of course, they have now got a brand new manager. Oli is no longer at the wheel and they have now appointed German Ralph Ranjik. But in terms of the man himself, as reports have confirmed, Rannick would not be in charge for Man United's match against Arsenal on Thursday, as the club continued to work through his visa and COVID process. And even in terms of Man United themselves, they have confirmed that Michael Carrick will remain in caretaker charge for Thursday's Premier League match. With all due respect to Michael Carrick, the fact that he's going to be at the wheel for the game on Thursday gives Arsenal even more pressure to go and get the win. And I say that because in terms of Arsenal, we have a manager, we have a team, we have the tactics, we have a starting eleven. Whereas in the case of Man United, while they do have quality, they are very unsettled. But at the same time, they do have a lot of attacking threats. Fernandez, Cristiano Ronaldo, Marcus Rashford, Jadon Sancho. While you have to obviously give them respect, at the same time, I'm going to go as far as saying I think a win is really possible. Talking about Man United's team news, Harry Maguire is set to be available for Manchester United to face after following his suspension. Now, for many teams, getting their captain back available and fit is normally a boost. But in terms of, boy, I'm not going to lie to you guys, I'm not really a fan of Harry Maguire. If anything, this might just be a advantage us. And in terms of the Arsenal team news, as the Daily Mail have confirmed, Arsenal were hopeful that Bukayo Saka has avoided a significant injury after he was forced off against Newcastle. Yes, he might be 20 years of age, but he is so, so important to the Arsenal attack. And in terms of that Newcastle game, he once again proved that he is, for me right now, Arsenal's best creator. But talking about Arsenal starting 11s, here is the 11 that started and won Old Trafford last season. With Bern Lello in goal, a back three of Rob Holding, Gabriel Magalhaes and Kirantini, a four of Hector Bellerin, Mo El Nani, Thomas Partey and Bukayo Saka behind a front three of Willian, Lacazette and Pierre Mkubamiang. Jeez Louise, look at the state of that team. I mean, look on the right-hand side. Holding El Elneny, Bayerin and Willian, two of those players not even here anymore. And only, I believe, four or five of those guys are still current Arsenal starters. It once again just goes to show how much this Arsenal team has changed under Arteta over the past year. And also, at the same time, if Arsenal were able to win out of Trafford last year with that team, with a better team on paper this year, why can't we go over there and do the business again? Because in terms of Arsenal's top four race, this is a massive, gargantuan game. As of right now, Arsenal sit fifth in the Premier League, level points West Ham in fourth, and five points clear of Man United. And so let's just say Arsenal with to somehow do the business and get the win, Arsenal would go eight points clear of their top four rivals in Man United. This is the same team that was meant to be title contenders at the start of the season. What do you guys make of Arsenal's chances in the race for the top four? And do you guys seriously believe that Arsenal have a chance to bring back Champions League football this season? And also let me know your Arsenal versus Manchester United match day predictions. Okay, then let's move on to the other Arsenal news today. And starting off with Arsenal star boy, Mexican star boy Marcelo Flores in the Arsenal Academy, who as Charles Watt has confirmed that he's been called up by Mexico's senior side for a friendly next week against Chile in the United States. And he will now fly out tomorrow to link up with the squad after getting 
signed permission from Arsenal. 18 years of age, he's never played a single minute for Arsenal's first team and already getting called up to the Mexican senior side. This, my friends, is gargantuan. Flores has been in sparkling form for the under 18 side this season, netting six goals and registering two assists in nine league outings. Form he's carried over with the Mexico on the 20 side as they won the inaugural 2021 Revelations Cup in November. Such has been the level of his performances. There are calls for him to move up an age group and feature for Kevin Betsy's under 23 side. Already he's been given a chance to train with the first team under Arteta and the pathway is there for him to follow the footsteps of Charlie Patino, Omari Hutchinson and Salah before him. Hale End is at it again giving us another Amazon Prime delivery, next day delivery for another top top youngster and now we have a brand new youngster and a second midfielder in Marcelo Flores is set to be a Mexican full on international. I think we can classify this my friends as a gargantuan dub. This week's Who Scored Premier League Team of the Week has featured Alto duo Takehiro Tomiyasu and Bukayo Saka. Positive vibes, positive FC, Arsenal FC, beautiful scenes, Arsenal's duo on the right hand side on fire against Newcastle. So hopefully if Saka is fit for the game on Thursday, he can reunite with Takehiro Tomiyasu. And talking about Tomiyasu, he alongside Gabriel Magalhaes, Emma smith -Rone and Ramsdale is up for the Arsenal November Player of the Month award. Unlike last year where Gabriel Magalhaes won it three times in a row, Arsenal finally have options and it's things again that I'm just loving seeing right now. In terms of the players there, it's a very sticky decision. Smith Rowe has been banging in the goals, Rams are keeping clean sheets. And in terms of Gabriel Magalhaes and Takahiro Tomiyasu, both for me very underrated in the Arsenal back four. I am actually finding it very hard to give an answer. So as per my friends, let me know your own thoughts down below. Out of Gabriel, Tomiyasu, Smith Rowe and Ramsdale, who do you guys think should be the Arsenal November player of the month? But that is the video there and there. If you guys have enjoyed, make sure to go down there and smash a like on the video. And also do subscribe to your boy's channel if you guys are new. If you would like to follow your boy on them social medias, then the links will be down below in the description. But that was the latest Arsenal news today. Alex Lacazette talking about a move away for me. The focus is on Thursday, Monday night at Old Trafford. But until then, my friends, I will see you next time.